Hello everyone, welcome back to another Starships 2.0 tutorial. This time I'll be talking about hyperspace travel. Hyperspace is an alternate dimension that starships can travel in to traverse the galaxy far faster than in real space. To jump into hyperspace, your ship needs to be equipped with the hyperdrive slot modification. It is also recommended that you install a nav computer, but it is not required. You can also have a backup hyperdrive, which requires the aptly named backup hyperdrive modification. Backup hyperdrives are almost always slower than a ship's primary hyperdrive, but it can be nice to have in case of emergencies. Remember that only one hyperdrive can be activated at a time. You may have noticed while looking through Chapter 5 that there are a number of different hyperdrives to choose from, of various costs and classes. The speed of a hyperdrive is determined by its class, and is rated on an inverse scale. Hyperdrives with smaller class numbers are faster than those with larger class numbers. For example, a class 1 hyperdrive is faster than a class 4 hyperdrive. Additionally, the number relates the hyperdrive's speed to the speed of light. To determine how fast a hyperdrive is, divide the speed of light by the hyperdrive's class number. For example, a class 0.5 hyperdrive allows travel at twice the speed of light, whereas a class 4 hyperdrive allows travel at one quarter the speed of light. As one would expect, faster hyperdrives are more expensive. Once your ship is in hyperspace, travel time through the galaxy is scaled in hours. Remember that every day your ship spends in hyperspace or real space, it consumes one unit of fuel. This chart is a compilation of how long it takes to go from one region of the galaxy to another. For example, traveling from the inner rim to the outer rim takes 72 hours, or 3 days. These times assume your ship has a class 1 hyperdrive. If your ship doesn't have a class 1 hyperdrive, simply multiply the hours listed here by the class of your ship's hyperdrive. For example, for a ship with a class 2 hyperdrive to travel from the inner rim to the outer rim, it takes 144 hours, since 72 times 2 is 144, or 6 days. For longer trips, you can consult the table more than once. For example, if you're planning a trip from Moncala to Naboo, you may plan one course from the outer rim to the inner rim, and then a second from the inner rim to the mid rim, and add the travel times together. So how do we go about getting into hyperspace? The first thing you need to consider are mass shadows. Every object generates a mass shadow, with more massive objects, such as planets, moons, and stars, generating mass shadows that extend well beyond their surface. You cannot jump to hyperspace from within a mass shadow, and if your ship detects a mass shadow in its way while traveling through hyperspace, your hyperdrive safeties will kick in and you will be dropped out of hyperspace immediately before entering the mass shadow, though such a drop will not cause damage. The second thing you need to consider is plotting a route through hyperspace. Before jumping to hyperspace, a ship's crew needs to plot a course via astrogation by completing 10 astrogation equations. When not under duress, these calculations can be done over the course of 10 minutes, resulting in the automatic completion of all 10 equations. The problem is when you're under stress and need to plot a course quickly, such as during combat. When performing the calculations under stress, a crew member can use their action to make an intelligence astrogation check to complete the equations. This check can only be done once per round, and if your ship has a nav computer installed, the check can be made with a bonus action instead of an action. Once the check has been made, consult the astrogation results table. The better you did on the check, the more equations you complete. At most, you can complete five equations in a single check. Once all ten equations have been completed, a crew member can engage the hyperdrive as an action, and if the ship's pilot spends 50 feet of movement flying forwards, the ship will jump into hyperspace. Remember that jumping in hyperspace consumes one unit of fuel. There are some modifiers you can apply to the astrogation check, which can make them easier. Firstly, you get advantage on the check if your astrogation data is less than a day old, but if the data is older than a week, you have disadvantage on the check. Astrogation data can be updated at any major spaceport for 150 credits. Secondly, you can choose to modify your travel time within hyperspace. You can choose to double the travel time, and if you do, you gain a plus 5 bonus to the, to the astrogation checks. What if you can't finish or decide not to finish all 10 astrogation equations? Well, accidents can happen. If your ship jumps into hyperspace before all 10 equations are finished, your GM rolls 1d20 plus the number of finished equations and consults the hyperspace mishap table. Your GM can apply the mishap immediately or delay it for dramatic effect. If your ship made zero calculations, and the GM rolled a 20 on the d20 for the mishaps table, your ship emerges from hyperspace unscathed, but in a completely random location. One last thing to mention is detecting hyperspace travel. 
When a ship enters or exits hyperspace, it generates a short burst of chronon radiation. Any facility with adequate sensors can detect this radiation burst with a DC-20 wisdom scan check. Success would indicate whether the burst is from arrival or departure, as well as its point of origin. With a successful DC-25 intelligence probe check, the angle of departure can be determined, indicating possible destinations. And that about wraps this up. This was a really long one, but there was a lot to cover here. I hope you found this helpful and informative, and I'll see you on the next one.